I think my hair and makeup is apropos for this video. If you've not been through someone close to you having cancer, then you might not want to watch this, but whatever. So, me and my husband were together nine years. A year and a half ago, he passed away. So, we went back to his home state in Vermont, and he had been taking Prilosec for that stomach, whatever, for year, forever, since I knew him. And one day, his side was hurting, and he went to the emergency room, and his rib was broken. And he got back in the car and he told me. And I said, what? And they told him at the hospital, uh, your ribs broke. Cancer can do that. What? So, I, I forget what caused him to go back to the hospital, but... They did an MRI and all that. And they just told him right there at his bedside, matter-of-factly. I don't even think it was a doctor. It could have been a nurse. I don't remember. You know, you have cancer, sir. It's in your liver, your lung, your stomach. And we were just at, I was at shock. And they rolled him down the hall. And he was crying. And, you know, I shouted out to him in front of all the nurses and doctors at their computers. I said, don't worry. You know, I continue to have a positive attitude. Because I know Jesus can heal, but it, it wasn't meant to be in his case. But to take care of somebody, he was six foot two, 235 pounds. And the oncologist, I think that's. You know, he was just matter-of-factly, well, you're going to get down to 175 pounds. I didn't believe, I didn't want to believe it. I always believed that, you know, he was going to get better. Plus, he had two tumors in his brain that they, you know, had a, he had a big scar and they took him out and, he went on chemo treatment, lost a lot of his hair, lost a lot of weight. Then they did radiation. They make this gear for the head and, you know, they do the radiation. They did it on his brain. They did it on his stomach. And he went through all that. His doctor told him. You know, it wasn't from smoking that did this. His father died at 52 from brain cancer. So, And his granddaughter had brain cancer. You know, it was in the genes for his family. But um, to see him get thinner and thinner and eat less and less, the hardest thing... I remember as seeing a, a strong man not be able to get up off the toilet because he couldn't stand up. He couldn't stand up in the shower anymore. You know, that was the hardest for him to look me in the eyes. And I had to help him. You know, he wanted me to take care of him, not his sister's. So we were in our little apartment and then, you know, the hospice had to come and bathe them in bed and he couldn't eat. So I, that year I cooked, you know, Thanksgiving dinner cause that's my favorite and he wouldn't eat. And, you know, I told him, I said, you're not going to get better. You're not going to gain weight if you don't eat. So I ended up eating most of the dinner and. I didn't want to believe that he actually couldn't eat. I kind of feel guilty about that. 
but um so morphine every day and I put on the pharmacist hat I don't know how the rules bend like that I have no idea the hospice nurse showed me how to administer it to him and I did for a whole year he was not in pain thank God so it got to the point where I couldn't roll him anymore in bed. I just couldn't do it. And they catheterized him. And, you know, his urine was red, blood red. But I kept positive, you know. I'm like, you know, you're either going to have to go to the hospice facility or your sisters are going to have to come here. And he said, I'll go to hospice. By the way, they were awesome in Vermont. I forget the name of it, but they were in, I think, Burlington. They were really, really good. And so I took care of him for a year. Took his temperature. His temperature had to be taken, you know, every day. And, you know, I hurried and packed all his stuff. And, you know, thank God I just surrendered all his medicine to those hospice nurses. Because I, I, I didn't want to have that responsibility. You know, that's serious. So he was there three days. That's all. And I stayed with him by his bedside. You know, I was sleeping on the rollout bed they had. And he, early one morning, he, he just snapped out of it. He's like, baby, baby, wake up, wake up. It's like somebody was trying to take him out of the room in the spirit world. And I was just too exhausted to move. I couldn't get up. And he, um, before that, he was talking to somebody in the room. And when I looked up to see him talking, He stopped talking and he looked at me and he just, he went like this with his hand. Did I already do this video? Seems like I did. Maybe another channel. Anyway, that morning the nurse came in and very matter of factly, you know, told me he's, he's almost, go he's passing away. You know, his, his toes were pointed down like he was flying. And um, slowly he quit breathing. And she said, he's gone. And I cried like a baby at his bedside. You know, the nurse was coming up to me and she's patting me on my back, which I didn't want anybody touching me. I said, I got to get out of here. Because I knew he was gone. He was not in that body anymore. And I don't know what I did. I guess I went and got some coffee. And when I came back, he, through me, he saw a lot of miracles happen. And I'm not going to say his religion, but it wasn't Christian. But I think I swayed him a lot. So I, I touched his body on his forehead and I, you know, in Jesus' name and by his blood, Daniel, you go to the light. You go to Jesus Christ. And I know he did because he, a week, he, for a week, he, him or his angel would send me little little gifts to let me know he is okay. He's not in hell. I mean, for one, we would always fight, not fight, but argue, you know, hurry, get off the bathroom. I got to go. It's my turn. You know, we would do that a lot. We had to go at the same time for some reason. So the day after he passed away, I was at the apartment and I was scurrying. You know, him and I were not, we were kind of black sheeps. We didn't plan things out. You know, I had to get rid of stuff, sell stuff, 
pack whatever I could into this car and go across country. But I was sitting there on the toilet. The toilet paper was empty, so I had to take it off the roll, throw it on the floor, put a new roll onto the toilet paper <laughs> dispenser, whatever. What is that? Five, ten seconds. That toilet paper, you know, the cardboard that I put on the floor, it popped up like a foot. I am not kidding you. It's honest to God truth. That thing popped up on the floor as if to tell me, you know, hurry up, get off the toilet because I got to go. I, I knew he was all right. And some other things happened. So to watch, you know, we're not supposed to die. Humans were not created to die. That's why it breaks our hearts so bad. We don't get a broken heart over getting gray hair or, oh, you're going to have a baby. That's going to hurt. Does that break your heart? No. It's just a, a fact of life. But dying? We were never meant to die. Uh, we were meant to live forever. Adam and Eve were meant. They, you know the human body renews itself. What is it? Every seven years? We weren't meant to die. That's why it hurts so bad. So, you know, I've been... And the funny thing is, 12 years ago, I forget how long ago, he introduced me to YouTube because he had a great job. He was a crane operator. He's like, you just stay home and, you know, here's YouTube. It'll give you something to do. But he was very embarrassed of me because of the videos I make. A lot of them he, he, he didn't like. So... You know, it's just a memory and something we go through. And sometimes it's harder to be the one left alive, isn't it? Because we have that memory. So, you know, there is hope, though. There is Jesus Christ.